Uh, my name is Dan Juvenile. I'm the Executive Director of Global Solutions Pittsburgh. We are a nearly 70-year-old organization uh, in Pittsburgh. We were founded immediately after World War II as part of the peace movement, our predecessor, the United World Federalists. Uh, and fast forward 68 years, uh, we're interested in providing globally focused, internationally focused education in schools and communities across Western Pennsylvania. We see our mission in two different areas, one in the school, what we loosely call our education program, and one in the community. In the schools, we provide a variety of services from teacher professional development to student workshops to our big flagship program, uh, the Model United Nations. Uh, we, we host a handful of conferences with local universities. We train students and teachers all over the region, uh, something in the order of a thousand students a year. It allows students the opportunity to learn about global issues and countries in a fun and interesting way. My name is George Savarese, and I've been teaching here at Mount Lebanon High School since 1997. Uh, I teach U.S. History, and I teach Honors International Relations. And in addition to that, I also coach the Model United Nations team, the Model UN team. And so, to me, what Global Solutions is, is a partner. You know, they're the partner that reaches out to teachers, reaches out to students, that reaches out to schools to help us as we try to get our kids excited and aware and learn about these incredibly complex international issues. Then in the community we have a variety of community outreach programs, our primary being the Global Challenges and Local Impact Series, a monthly discussion series we host up at the Union Project. And the, the, the thing that's unique about this is the strong focus on the community. It's not an academic discussion, it's a discussion with experts, but it's truly a discussion. It's not a lecture, and with call it a discussion. It's people sitting in a room and talking to each other uh, and having the access to talk to true, meaningful experts on it, but to really have a conversation. Our unique niche is that interest in the community and access. Uh, our region is blessed with some fantastic universities some large uh, organizations that provide wonderful programming around international issues, the university is the forefront of this. But what they do so well is provide information and education internally to their own communities. One of the challenges that we see in our region is providing similar education in a way that's accessible and consumable to the general public, and that's where we try to aim. Pitt, for instance, we've worked with for goodness 25 or 30 years at least. We have a wonderful relationship with them. They do a great job running programs around international issues on Pitt's campus, but that's not our, in our interest area. They do that well, so what we try to do is connect things like that into the community for individuals who are less likely to go to a university campus. I think Dan did a really good job of talking about how the universities do a really great job of doing this. And as a relatively recent graduate, I was always very impressed with the range of opportunities that there were at the universities. But even as a student, I didn't necessarily make avail myself of them and take those opportunities. And certainly in a postgraduate world, um, I'm certainly not going back to campus to check out those opportunities. So I think that there really is a niche for people that are interested in these kind of opportunities and are interested in these kind of issues, even if they don't know that they're interested in these kind of issues, they just see something and think, oh, that looks cool, like, oh, that's pretty close, let's go check it out. Um, and so I think that that is a good way for us to kind of get into the community and avail ourselves of a different audience than maybe have the opportunity to go on campus. In the community, uh, you know, we've been active in the community for almost 70 years. Uh, which is a crazy thing, and that's taken different forms over the years uh, that is more or less responsive to changing world events, uh, sometimes less than ideal, certainly. Surprisingly, to me at least, we've seen a, a lot of demand for presentations about immigration um, within the past year, and I'm very pleased with that, but kind of surprised at the schools that it's coming from, and a lot of them are schools that have very little diversity that have um, socioeconomic and racial and any kind of diversity at all. And I think that that's what some of the teachers are really striving to do, is to say that even though this is not our reality, this is a reality that you still need to pay attention to. And this is a reality that affects people like you and kids like you. 
Um, and so that's an example, I think, of a push by administration and by teachers to kind of get the ball rolling on that. I think that the switchboard is fantastic. Um, it has certainly given us a lot of ability to collaborate in a way that I do not think that we would have been able to do before. But the big picture of the switchboard is even more valuable. We're claiming to be Pittsburgh's home for global engagement. And what I love about that is we don't know what that means. And I think that's what's exciting about it because even two years ago, nobody was really asking what it means to be a truly globally engaged city. There was lots of cool initiatives here and in other areas around the country to make cities more welcoming, but they were in a lot of ways disparate. Uh, and what we're doing here, I think, is asking the question in a different way, acknowledging that we don't know what the answer is and that that's okay, but the fact that we're asking it in a different way, asking what this means for different communities, not just an academic community, not just a business community, not just hey students, you gotta get a job, and it's a bad job market, what do you need to learn about the world so you can get hired? All of those things are important and necessary elements. We're looking at the whole ball of wax, uh, and I think that's different than anything that's happened locally. I think the scale of the, the movement, the organizations coming together, is different than has happened before, at least in a very, very long time, uh, and is very exciting for the region. You know, they were the United World Federalists in 1947, a phrase that makes just about everyone cringe in 2015. Our work in the community enables people to be better citizens and better global citizens, however they define that themselves.